treacherous driving conditions in the high country, blowing snow and icy roads. We're tracking closures at this hour as gusty winds move across the front range. Plus, as we approach one of the busiest travel days at the airport. Just a lot of people, it's a lot of traffic today. You can now tack on gusty winds combined with a staffing issue among air traffic controllers, and it could throw a wrench in your holiday travel plans. For most of the day, we've been in what's called a ground delay program. A possible hiccup in getting those stimulus checks into your bank accounts. I am asking Congress to amend this bill. The president hinting he won't sign Congress's $900 billion relief package. Why he's calling on Congress to make changes. I decided that I didn't want my siblings to be separated and go into the foster care system. A sense of normalcy for a family of nine children spending their first Christmas without their mother. Baby Yoda and it was my thing that I only wanted for Christmas. We have never seen a show of support for a family like this before. Denver 7 gives viewers and our community are making sure this family has everything they need and so much more. And first tonight, we are seeing whiteout conditions in the high country. Look at this blowing snow, making for some treacherous driving conditions. Multiple vehicles have spun off the road on Rabbit Ears Pass. In Pitkin County, officials are telling people to just stay off the road. They've issued a road advisory alerting people to the snow and icy conditions. We also got this incredible video sent in today. This is a snow squall moving through Steamboat, also making for a whiteout condition. And at lower elevations, those wind gusts, they're starting to pick up. Chief Meteorologist Mike Nelson. Nelson is here with more on what's ahead tonight into tomorrow. Mike. A crazy contrast from 60s earlier today before the cold front moved through to readings that now dropped into the 30s and even the teens in the mountains. Four below zero on Berthoud Pass and snow continuing in the mountains. We haven't seen much on the plains, just a little bit of light rain and snow shower activity. But the cold front has roared through the area now, borne in on winds of 40 to 50 miles per hour. High wind warnings over northeast Colorado. Winter weather advisories, central and northern mountains for tonight and tomorrow. Look at these wind gusts right now. 55 miles per hour at Fort Morgan up into the mountains. Boulder, Estes Park, 30 to 40 mile per hour wind gusts. So here's what happens overnight tonight. Three to six inches of snow for the mountains. The strong winds, windy and colder Wednesday. It does look mild and quiet heading toward Christmas, but then another storm in the seven day forecast. I'll have all the details in just a bit. All right, Mike, thanks. And those winds, they could cause some serious issues at the airport tomorrow ahead of the Christmas holiday. But we were already seeing hundreds of flight delays earlier today, even before that wind picked up. Denver 7 CB Cotton is at DIA with more on what caused those issues. Strong winds have already moved into the front range, and this could cause some travel delays at DIA tomorrow during one of the busiest days of the Christmas rush. There were already more than 250 delays today at DIA, not because of these winds, but due to COVID related staffing shortages with air traffic control. Christmas week at DIA. Despite a pandemic, there's no shortage of people. The lines are longer than expected. <laughs> or worry. We don't know if there's a delay or not. So they must still be on the flight because their phones are off. On Tuesday morning, DIA warned travelers on social media that COVID related staffing issues and air traffic control could cause delays. And some travelers said they noticed. A bit of a change from whenever we landed, right? Yeah. It was completely empty whenever we landed here uh, in Denver. And now it's like, yeah. The opposite side of the spectrum is just pretty packed. According to the FAA, a handful of air traffic control personnel tested positive in the last few months, and at least one tested positive in the last week. The FAA wouldn't say just how many personnel are currently out because of potential exposures or quarantine. If the winds do pick up um, tonight, in the morning, um, more delays are possible. The delays because of staffing shortages have been resolved, but the winds are now a concern. With high winds or with any kind of weather uh, at the airport, um, we always were always paying close attention to that, and our goal is always to ensure that planes are landing and taking off safely. DIA officials say both tomorrow and Sunday will be two of their busiest travel days this week, with more than 39,000 travelers expected to pass through TSA on both of those days. If there's any delays due to this wind, they hope for understanding from travelers. Reporting for Denver 7, I'm CB Cotton. Christmas came early for thousands of pilots and flight attendants who have been furloughed since September. 
The new stimulus bill will provide carriers with more than $15 billion in relief. More than 32,000 United and American Airlines employees will get their jobs back. Both airlines say the additional funds are enough to pay those workers through the end of March. In a major turn of events, the president is hinting he may not sign the $900 billion relief package Congress passed late last night. The bill is still sitting on his desk awaiting his signature. The president is calling for amendments to the bill, including asking Congress to increase the amount of money for those stimulus checks. I am asking Congress to amend this bill and increase the ridiculously low $600 to $2,000 or $4,000 for a couple. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi tweeted, Republicans repeatedly refused to say what amount the president wanted for direct checks. At last, the president has agreed to $2,000. Democrats are ready to bring this to the floor this week by unanimous consent. Let's do it. Republican Senator Lindsey Graham, an ally of the president, urged the president to quickly sign the bill. And Republican Senator Rand Paul said, if money grew on trees, sure, why stop at $600? President Trump has not officially vetoed the bill. He has 10 days to do so. Congress has to wait for the president to officially veto the bill before voting to override that veto. Problem is, new members of Congress will be sworn in January 3rd, so the House and Senate would have to override a veto before then, or the process starts all over again. The president-elect Joe Biden says he'll push for a third round of stimulus checks in the next COVID relief bill once he takes office. Republicans say this $900 billion stimulus package will likely be the last. We are now up to nearly 40,000 Coloradans who've been vaccinated in the last eight days. More shipments of Moderna's vaccine arrived in Colorado today. We know most of these vaccines have gone to health care workers with direct contact with COVID patients. And today, another group of at-risk Coloradans got their chance. Residents at the Veterans Community Living Center at Fitzsimmons in Aurora got their first dose. It's been a tough ride for this community. 25 residents have died because of the virus since this pandemic started. Now, the governor said he hopes to have almost all Colorado nursing homes get their first round of the vaccines by mid-January. I'm going to say this twice because I want it to sink in. 2020 marks the deadliest year in U.S. history. The deadliest year in our nation's history. A final mortality rate won't be available for months, but preliminary data shows the U.S. is on track to see more than 3.2 million deaths this year. That's about a 15% increase compared to numbers in 2019. 320,000 of those deaths are those who lost their lives from COVID-19 complications. For perspective here, the last time we saw a percentage increase like this was back in 1918 when tens of thousands of U.S. soldiers died in World War I and hundreds of thousands of Americans died because of the Spanish flu. A Thornton family of nine children left to fend for themselves after their mother's sudden death. At least that's what it felt like until Denver 7 Gives viewers heard their story. Here's Contact Denver 7 reporter Jacqueline Allen with how you and the community are changing their lives. I guess it's just still nice to have a tradition that makes us feel that our mom is still with us. The first Christmas without someone you love is never easy. I got a call at 5 a.m. in the morning and um, they told me that my mom wasn't breathing. By the time I got here, they said that she wasn't going to make it. When we told you about the Torres family last month. This is a picture of all of us when we were younger. I have seven younger siblings and one older sibling. 19-year-old Monica was worried about paying bills and the holidays after her mother's sudden death. I decided that I didn't want my siblings to be separated and go into the foster care system. And I didn't want them living in different households. They're trying to be adults. Adulting is hard. Greg Morellis is a youth advocate with Adams 12 Five Star Schools. He learned these kids were struggling with a $1,600 unpaid water bill. Tours, they're a special group, <laughs> special kids. They knew that they, when mom was gone, that they'd have to stick together, and they'd done that. So he reached out to the Butterfly Foundation that helps families going through tragedy. They knew that I needed a groundswell of support. That's where Denver 7 Gives generous viewers come in. The Butterfly Foundation promised to match our first $2,500 in viewer donations. We never expected what happened next. But on this day, we get to deliver the surprise, starting with a check from the Thornton Firefighters Union. We heard of your story and then the sacrifice that you're all making. And another check from the Thornton Police Union. Santa came early. Thornton Police and Islanding Direct asked for the family's Christmas wish list and checked off every single item. 
that was a big hit. Oh my God. For nine-year-old Jason, the magic of Christmas bringing much needed joy and the one present he wanted. Baby Yoda and it was my thing that I only wanted for Christmas. Yeah, I never seen like that much presence in my whole life. For a family that once loved to see Christmas lights with their mother. I hope you guys like them. Holiday light professionals covered their home in holiday spirit. We knew we had to do something. We just want you to have the best Christmas ever. Of course, this all started with a water bill. The Butterfly Foundation took care of that. I am here to tell you, I went online, I paid that bill. Your balance is zero dollars. Mm -hmm. The Butterfly Foundation just wanted to make sure that you guys uh, were a little ahead on groceries. So we have a thousand dollars to Walmart for you. The generosity just keeps coming. Matthew Moore's salon donating haircuts. You're all real strong and I look up to all of you. A whole bunch. And Colorado Auto Finders finding and helping pay for a new used car. This is your new car. So Thank much. you guys. Thank you. Denver 7 Giz viewers wanted to make sure this family is taken care of for a long time to come. This is the check to pay your Comcast bill for the next year. So your donations paid for their next year of internet service and the grand finale. Denver 7 Gives viewers wanted to make a difference in your life. And I wanted to let you know that we will have $35,000 in a trust. There's a whole bank account that's gonna be set up for anything that you need as you go through this. So I don't want you to be stressed for another day. We got you. I just wanna say thank you. Things have been really hard since we lost our mom, but I'm starting to think that this, we're just going to only come up from here. <laughs> Not just your family loves you. You have a lot of people love you, and that's just more than the whole world. This Christmas means a lot because it's the first Christmas without our mom, and I just wanted to make sure they had the best Christmas they could this year, and that happened. To the Denver 7 Gives viewers, I just want to say that I'm so grateful for every single one of you. In Thornton. It will change our life forever. We're always going to remember this. Jacqueline Allen for Denver 7 Gives. Wow, that was beautiful. Mm -hmm. And listen, if you would like to donate to the Torres Family Trust, we have kept their Denver 7 Gives fund open. Just go to the denverchannel.com, click on Denver 7 Gives, and look for Help for Seven Siblings in the drop-down menu. I really can't do much. I mean, they're just saying, will this arrive on time? Packages in limbo. It's like the perfect storm. Presents that may not make it in time for Christmas. This week is our busiest week of our busiest month of our busiest year ever. Tonight, the Postal Service is trying to keep up with an unprecedented year of online shopping. From 60s today to wind and cold on the way tomorrow. Plus, I'll take a look all the way through the Christmas holidays.